Jason, how are you, man? You... How's it going with you? Uh, yeah. you? You got a new album coming out, King Cobra. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, coming out. And it's uh, getting great reviews, got a great press about it so far, and uh, I'm happy about it because you know we we just put it together just for fun and see what see what would happen, you know, and and uh, it's getting you know some really great. Uh, Great reviews, you know, seven out of ten, eight, seven out of eight, nine out of ten, you know, four out of five, those kind of, you know, reviews. So I'm pleased about it. Let's say with the recording of this album compared to, you know, the 1986 album, would you say it's the same type of uh, going around the studio to make this album? No, we uh, we did not record the same way. Those albums were done with everybody in the studio. These albums were not done that way. These albums were done with everybody not in the studio, that uh, it was done by the internet quite a bit. So it's a totally, totally different uh, situation. How is it recording with the internet, you know, in this day of age? Well, um, the way we did it was, uh, first of all, everyone lives in different cities. Okay. So it was very impossible, especially with the... You know, with today's, uh, the budgets that you get to do a record today, it was pretty impossible to fly everybody in and do what, we need to, what needed to be done as far as doing a record like that. So we decided, because everybody lives in different cities and everybody's um, good enough and has studios in their house, that we can do it, you know, by the Internet. So the first way we did it was we had... Uh, Myself, Paul, uh, and Dave, Michael Phillips, we went to Vegas because Vegas is like in between L.A. and Phoenix. And uh, we met there with, with different tapes and uh, song ideas, and we met there for three days until we figured out you know, 12 different song ideas that we wanted to do. And then uh, everyone went home, and Dave then initiated... The song ideas with chord structures and, and a cut track that was sent to Paul, and then I went to Vegas and me and Paul put all the the the, the ideas that Dave had. We you know put them more together. Sometimes we cut and pasted some of the chord changes so they worked better for the vocal, and and uh, we put together lyrics, vocals, and you know, Dave had some chorus ideas. We took his choruses and made. You know, wrote the rest of the song to it lyrically, and and uh, and then we sent it all back to Dave with vocals on it. So then he would put more more uh, guitars on it that would be on the record. You know, but not just work guitars. He would put the actual guitar on there. Mm -hmm. You know, or something, or one guitar that would be a keeper. And then we'd send it back to us with the, with the click track. And when he did all that, then I went back to Vegas and went into the studio called Hit Track Studios with this engineer, Tom Parrin, and I recorded all the drums analog, and then went analog to uh, to Pro Tools. So the drums were done analog. So now we have the click track, the drums, the guitar, and a vocal. And then we went back to Paul's house, and we would, uh, we, the same time I did the drums, and we did more lead vocals and background vocals and finished up all the vocals. And then we would send it back to Dave where he would double the guitars, and then at, in the interim, Johnny Rod flew in, and they ended up moving to Vegas. But he flew in, and then he did the bass tracks in one day. So now we had, you know, we had Dave, Johnny, me, and Paul. And when we got to that point, we started sending the stuff to Mick in Fe Fresno, and he put his stuff on there. And then the, the album was mixed by Michael Voss in Germany. Hmm. And Michael Voss is a guy that did Paul Shortino's album. He did Gary Barden's album. He he mixed the uh, Michael Schenker DVD while I was on on tour at Michael Schenker, and uh, and then we gave him this uh, Ronnie James Dio tribute song that we wrote as, as a test to see how he would do mixing it, and he did a tremendous job on it. And then we hired him to mix the whole album. So pretty much that's how it all was recorded, and you know some stuff was done on the phone, like the song on there, the song called Fever. Uh, was written. I had done some drum tracks in the studio, and the Paul had the drum tracks in his house, and we we needed one more song, and he said, "Well, we so over the phone, I listened to a couple of the drum, the few of the drum tracks he had, 
And I said, let's do a track with that, with that feel. So we took that drum track and we edited it so it fit the song. And then we started writing that song over the phone. <laughs> That's wow. crazy, man. You know? And then once we wrote the song, and then I said, we need a, a riff that goes, you know, that fits that drum pattern. And Paul came up with a riff idea. He hummed it to me on the phone. I said, yeah, why don't we change that to this? And, and then we gave it to Dave, and then Dave actually played it. And then we put Johnny on it and did the whole process again. And But this time I didn't have to go cut the drums. And there was came out great. You would not You would have never known if I didn't tell you that. When you're in the studio, do you uh, mic the drums yourself? Like, do you know your own techniques that you uh, use? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh-huh. Yeah, I've been doing this long enough that I, I have my drum sound pretty much down. And uh, as long as, it, you know, you have to mi- have the, a mixer that understands what kind of drum sound I'm going for, you know. But I just did an album with a Spanish guy, and then the guy who mixed it didn't get it. And uh, I'm not really happy about the drum sound he he finished the album with. It sounds okay, but it could be anybody playing, you know. It mm-hmm. didn't have my stamp on it, you know. But the King Cobra record definitely has my stamp on it, you know. And uh, you got to, like I said, the, the guy's got to understand what you're looking for in the drum sound. And you know, my drum sound's always been a live, kick-ass, in-your-face drum sound, you know. When did you wake up in the morning and say, you know, this is uh, my signature? Uh, I didn't, you know, I, I, ever since I was a kid when I was playing, I always used to get people come up and say, wow, you really sound great, or you have a great foot, and you have a great set of hands, or, you know. So I, I've always had a little bit of that in my life, you know. And But I didn't know really that I had come up with anything unique or different until years later, you know, probably in the in the 80s when... When people were, you know, like I was running to Tommy Lee, and Tom, he was emulating John Bonham, who I know was doing some of the stuff that I was doing, you know. And when I told Tommy Lee that, you know, that John Bonham got it for me, he didn't believe me. I had to show him the original Ed Sullivan shows that were filmed in 1968 with me doing that stuff before Led Zeppelin was even around. You know, and then he would go, wow, I didn't know you did that first. And that's when I started realizing that I had done something that, you know, is is passed down to generations, you know. And, uh, you know, and it wasn't a plan. It's just we did it by accident, you know. We did it because there was no microphones and there was no uh, no big PA systems or anything like that, you know, to play. Uh, like today, you know, you've got PA systems, you got you got uh, monitor systems. We didn't have any of that stuff in the old days, you know? So, so the uh, dynamics had to be stronger. Yeah, the dynamics were all natural, and the dynamics of the drums were all all real, all just, you know, all just um, wh- whatever you got on the stage, with that, with that was it, you know? I mean, it had a few mics and a few PA systems, but they, they were terrible, you know? But it was so I had to play louder and harder, and by doing that, I said, you know, let me get a bigger drum, bass drum, it'd be louder, and then let me get a, you know, I got a whole drum set when I got my Ludwig endorsement that were all full oversized drum set, you know, and uh, <clears throat> and then when I did that, I pioneered that, and you know, you had uh, John Bonham wanted the same set as mine, and you know, then he got it. The two bass drums, you took one bass drum away, you ended up getting the Led Zeppelin drum set. Mm. You know, and, you know, so it was just things happened, you know, without planning. You know what I'm saying? It just happened. And that's the, the difference. A lot of people don't do that today. You know, they, they're trying to plan everything, you know. And uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't work like that sometimes, you know. <laughs> things have to happen with a natural flow. Come on, let's say in the roots of your family tree, how deep does it go, you know, with music? How long ago? Well, they don't really go very deep. It, uh, the, there was my cousin Joey, who played um, who played drums before me, and then uh, then me, you know, and that was it. You know, and then I had, we have a lot of drummers in our family, including my son's just on the play now. So if my son starts playing... Uh, he would be like the eighth drummer in our family to, to play, you know. So it's pretty wild. The grandparents and that did not play drums that you're no, aware of. No, no, no. My cousin played drums. He was the first one. 
And also with this album, I see that you know the the download royalties go to the Ronnie James Dio Cancer Fund. No, not for the album, just for that one song. Yeah, just for the song uh, Monsters and Heroes. That's why it's not on the album. Yeah, we wanted to make it easy and clean to pay the royalties without having to, you know, okay, well, this song was played here, it was downloaded there, it was, you know, it was, it was sold here, it was on the album. You know, it, it was much easier just to say all the downloads go to the, you know, the label. We had a different label doing it, and all the royalties go to him, you know, so nothing goes to us. So that's much easier to do, you know. Let's say for your, you know, signature um, symbols, were right. you in the factory making them, you know, as they're going and, well, I, you know, deciding well, this is the in, sound? Well, we yeah, are not making them as they were going, but we, we, I was up there a few days testing, testing them and, and, and until we got something that I liked, you know. Uh, that's what you would normally do with signature symbols. Uh, yeah, you don't have to be in the factory per se, you know. I was up there, I, I told him what we were looking for, we did different tests, and then we, we hit upon something we liked, and then I left, and then they made them up, and then they sent them to me. And then I would say, yeah, it's good, or I need a little more top end, or I need a little more crack, or a little more this, or a little more that, you know. So that's that's how it always, it, it's pretty much worked. But, uh, you know, you saw, like I said, you didn't have to be there at the time, you know. It must have been hard, though, you know, to uh, decide on this is the right tone. Well, you know, I used other symbols as a basis. You know, I had some old, uh, I had some old um, pasty symbols from the '60s that I liked. You know, and we uh, we used some of those as a basis. You know, and uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool using being able to do that. You know, for drumming, you know, um, do you have certain tweakings in the the, t the skins and stuff that you do specially for uh, your own tone that people don't know about? Right. But it's um, but it's just the way. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of my sound and drumming comes from the way I hit the drums, and the, you know, it's really a uh, part of it. It's the way you hit the drums because I can go on someone else's drum set and play it, and it'll sound like me. You know, uh, whereas uh, somebody can come on my drum set and it won't even sound like me. It won't sound. It'll sound like them. Right. You know. So that's that's a, that's the funny thing about drumming. You know. But yeah, I tune my drums a certain way, you know, I do certain things to the bass drum, we use certain heads to make it, you know, more, you know, of what I'm used to and with the sound I like. But, uh, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is the sound that's going to, you know, be there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if someone else plays it. For sure. It's all, it's all in the hands, too, you know? One thing here on your discography, like let's say on your website, do you have your complete discography listed? And is there stuff that you know you forgot about? Would you say? Well, I mean, it's listed to a point. That I don't. I don't think it's up to date totally. I mean, I haven't tell you the truth. I haven't looked at my discography, my website, in a long, long time. But now that you mention it, I'll go look. <laughs> because uh, you have a massive discography, you know. There's not many musicians that you know accomplish all those albums like you did. Yeah, I know. There's a lot on there. Um, but tell you the truth, uh, there's probably a few missing. A few of the later ones uh, might be missing. Because uh, I said, you know, how much already? You know, I don't even know where. Where is the <laughs> where is the discography? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, in the bio, I guess, right? Combine info, I think it's over there. Yes, it is. Talk. Yeah, that should goes to show you the last time I was there. You have to check that out on your site. Yes, let me see here. Yeah, there's a lot there. Blue Murder, Bo Diddley, Cactus is 06. Yeah, there's a new Cactus album that come out uh, now that's uh, it's called Cactus Music. It's not on there. Um Rock is V8, uh, probably the Carmine piece, Guitar Zeus, Conquering Heroes is not on there. Um, DNA is on there. Uh, I don't see uh, this Guitar Zeus, Ultimate Guitar Zeus on there. Uh, Jeff Beck, Rev Watson, KGB, let's do that. I mean, there's a lot in there that you know wouldn't be on, like the Ashton Lord, uh, Pace Ashton Lord. That's a 
Or in Rod Stewart. Now he had his Rod Stewart had just had two box sets that are not mm-hmm. on there. Um, so it's somewhat up to date, but it's there's a few missing. There's some that I shouldn't, uh, I don't even like on there. <laughs> <laughs> in your solo albums, is there stuff that's unreleased out of those solo albums that we've not heard yet? Well, yeah, I have some stuff that I did as it was me and Tim did as Vanilla Fudge without the original members that I might release as uh, Carmine and Peace and Friends because it was some great arrangements of like the the Everly Brothers Bye Bye Love and Alicia Keys Falling and a couple other odds and ends. And I listened to them the other day. I said, man, these things sound really good. You know, my manager has a record label. And he said, you know what? Maybe we should put something out, call my piece of friends and add to it and get some of this stuff out. Because he, he heard it and thought it was really good, too. So, so there's, a, there's some stuff like that laying around. You know, I'm, I'm doing an anthology album with Fuel because I have my whole catalog on, on there. Um, you know, you no, know, a Vanilla Fudge record. We have a Cactus record. And I've got Travis the Peace and uh, um, King Cobra uh, collection, and you know Derringer and the Peace, and a and a Derringer uh, Boga the Peace record. So there's a lot of stuff on there. So he's going to take a little of each one and release a box set kind of thing. You know, which would be cool. So I haven't had any of those in my life. Excellent stuff. So, Carmine, I'm sure you're really busy with interviews today. Uh, the media is calling you. Yeah, yeah, we're doing a lot today and uh, and Friday. So that's cool, man. I appreciate you uh, taking your interest in doing this. It's... All right, Carmine, uh, you have a good one. Hey, man. Thank you. Okay, cheers. Bye-bye.